great to see everyone here on this beautiful spring morning in New York City. Um, my name is John Smith, and I'm an IBM uh, fellow, and also uh, I manage a research team at TJ Watson Research Center. It's a little bit of a drive north of, of here in Westchester County. And our team's mission, simply put, is teaching Watson to see. So what this means is, as we think about every industry, uh, every business, a client of, of IBM, they're increasingly being faced with all kinds of unstructured data. Uh, they want to extract information from it, insights from it, and our mission, we have to allow them to deal with images and videos just as effectively as all of the other modalities. So today I'm going to talk about some of the work that we're doing, and um, I'll talk about some examples of, of opportunities to improve our lives leveraging visual recognition at scale. So I think in this audience, I'll, I'll not find much disagreement on, on this slide. I think we all see that uh, images and video is growing in volume and, and importance. Um, this is happening for lots of reasons. On the gen clearly on the generation side, uh, people are uh, producing more content. We're consuming more content. 80% of all data today is indeed unstructured. And when we look at particular in industries like healthcare, uh, medicine, 90% of the data is indeed images. But what we're seeing is it's really across all industries. Increasingly, visual data is becoming uh, both uh, the question and the answer. Uh, it was really amazing. Yesterday, I, I didn't know that it was possible to analyze automobiles from street view images to, uh, to basically you know, predict the same data that the census um, is, is, uh, is gathering, uh, but that's exactly the kind of idea that becomes possible when we can more easily understand the contents of, of images. So we're seeing across, you know, really all different in industries, everything from uh, retail, uh, where we're able to search for products better, uh, we're able to understand uh, styles of clothing, uh, we can look for patterns in, and trends in fashion, uh, to health and wellness, uh, where we can have a better ability to uh, track our diet, what we eat, um, have systems that alert us if we have food allergies. Um, medical imaging, of course, is another huge one uh, where images and the ability to, to understand the contents of images can give us <clears throat> better ability to uh, detect disease, to extract important clinical features that can help with diagnosis, or find similar images in similar cases that can lead to better treatment. And then, of course, there are lots of applications related to entertainment and other industries uh, where we really need to understand video better. So what I'm going to talk about today, I'll, I'll pick a few of these. I'll go into a little bit more detail, tell you about what we're doing, and, and show some results. Uh, but first, I want to take a step back. Our research team works very closely with our uh, Watson business unit. Uh, that business unit is creating a, what they call a cognitive a cloud platform. It's essentially a set of APIs that are very easy to use. They're meant for developers building solutions for all kinds of industries. And visual recognition is a big component of, of this uh, Watson cognitive platform. It sits alongside a lot of other capabilities uh, like natural language processing, uh, speech transcription, language translation, uh, personality insights, uh, tone analysis, uh, but vision is a big part of, of the services that are there. It provides everything from, you know, on one end of the spectrum, a set of built-in capabilities. Uh, we call it uh, base image tagging, where a developer simply sends images to the API and they get back um, labels that are uh, that the that the service recognizes in in the contents of their images. Uh, to the other side, other end of the spectrum, where it's completely custom learning driven. Uh, developers and users can bring their own training data. The system will uh, learn a model from their data, manage that model for them, and then they can use it in application. And there's something in between here. We call it uh, domain models. Um, I'll say a little bit more about that one, but, but these are where uh, IBM goes to the effort to sort of try to jump start a problem set. Uh, food is the first area where we've done this, but I'll say a little bit more about this shortly. 
Um, so just to give an illustration here on the base image tagging, uh, this is really a very simple service to use. Uh, it's meant for developers. There's a lot of documentation. Uh, images are sent to the service through API calls. Uh, JSON objects are returned. And you know, in that return, it's basically the set of labels that cover really a l huge vocabulary that spans objects and places and scenes and activities, uh, colors, many, many other things. It has also some capabilities around face, as you can see. Uh, we'll detect faces, gender, age, um, you know, as well as the ability to, you know, to have some customization. It's this customization uh, capability that uh, we're finding to be really very popular in practice. So while built-in tagging is good, it's kind of a one-size-fits-all, and it's maybe more general uh, consumer photos. Uh, what we're seeing is that developers have in mind particular solution areas of different industries. The custom learning API allows people to bring their own training data. Uh, the system will learn a model. So for example, if you're building an application that processes uh, insurance images related to automobile claims, um, what you can do is you can essentially uh, teach the computer uh, the different categories of vehicle damage that are important. Uh, the system will learn a model. Uh, this is meant for a developer, not a data scientist. So a lot of the complexity of how that model is learned, how it's cross-validated, um, and so on, is handled by the service. And then that model is available for the developer. Uh, they own it, um, but it's essentially you know, there for them. They can use it. Uh, they can improve it. They can add more training data. They can add more categories, and, and so on. But it's available f uh, for them. And then if they want to send images to the service, uh, their model will label those images. So this customization capability, as I said, is really popular. And it's giving us a way to, you know, to, to scale to many different industry problems um, and, and domains. I'm going to pick one uh, use case where our research team has been very active in specializing this custom learning capability. And that's around skin cancer image analysis. Um, well, we all love a sunny day. We don't have one today. Uh, it, uh, as it turns out, um, but unfortunately, skin cancer is the most common cancer uh, today. Uh, it affects millions of people every year, and melanoma in particular is a deadly form of skin cancer that kills as many as 10,000 people in, in the U.S. alone. Early and accurate detection of melanoma is really life or death for, for the patients who, who have melanoma. Um, unfortunately, uh, clinicians today, even the, the best uh, dermatology experts, are only between 75 and 84 percent accurate in detecting melanoma um, from dermoscopic images. So what we have been working on, and this is in collaboration with uh, the International Skin Image Imaging uh, Consortium, is to put together a large data set of training images around skin cancer and melanoma. Uh, we just completed our second challenge. Um, at the uh, ISBE, uh, IEEE ISBE conference in April um, around this particular data set. And in our, in our team in IBM Research, we've been developing algorithms that can, uh, that can detect melanoma from these der dermoscopic images. Uh, we're able to, in the lab, get a 95% accuracy in, in recognizing melanoma from these images. And we do other things like extract clinical features. There's you know, th this ABCD. Um, a metric for characterizing these images, a segmentation, other things. Uh, so this is really an important direction uh, for us. Um, I did mention the pre-built custom model around food. So what we've been working on um, as our first launch of a domain-specific model in the Watson service uh, just last week is a food model. Uh, this is meant for developers to uh, be able to send images. Um, Maybe they have an application where they're tracking nutrition or what people eat and have the service recognize the different categories of food. Uh, the service has uh, a large taxonomy around it, a hierarchy of 2,000 uh, different foods and dishes, uh, everything from bread stuff to uh, pasta and pizza to snack foods, um, sweets, and so on. And what we intend in the future is that this will be uh, completely extensible, that people will be able to specialize it further for their own particular food applications. Um, lastly, I want to just cover um, uh, one example around video. Uh, we uh, applied our services for uh, a pretty interesting problem 
around assisting the process of creating movie trailers. Uh, what we did is we uh, took the ability to understand visual scenes, objects, act activities, and so on, um, so we could understand movie content. Um, the particular domain here that we worked on is horror movies, and we additionally added some detectors around visual sentiment and visual um, and sound emotion. What this gave us is an ability to create a feature space to understand horror movie content uh, very deeply. And when we use this feature space to then analyze uh, movie trailers uh, that have been created historically in this domain, we were able to discover uh, really the principal dimensions that characterize these horror trailers. The net of it is it gave us an ability to have the computer automatically go through a movie and pick out the best scenes for a movie trailer. Um, in this case, it took the whole process of making a movie trailer from something that is three months uh, down to, to one day. I'm not going to show the trailer. I think I don't have enough time, but it's actually there on YouTube. It's gotten you know, millions of views uh, since we've done this. But I'll show one last example here. Um, we recently applied this same concept uh, to, uh, to, to sports. Um, at the Masters event in April, um, similarly, we used the system, we used our tools to analyze uh, the sounds and the scenes from uh, four days of continuous camera footage for, for the Masters event. <clears throat> this was a, so it's amazing, this was a truly remarkable shot. This happened to be the most important moment as identified by the computer. But essentially what the computer did here throughout the four days of, of the game is um, curate uh, fully automatically a highlight reel. Um, throughout, throughout the event. Anyway, I think I need to conclude here. Um, our research team is still you know, uh, pursuing a lot of uh, technical problems. Uh, there's a lot of work to do still across this whole space of visual recognition at scale. Everything from understanding uh, graphics and figures in, in uh, documents to images and video, as I mentioned. And really here we're aiming at allowing different industries, allowing our customers, allow, allowing businesses to address problems of visual uh, recognition at scale uh, because it's important to them um, and it's, it's important to us uh, that we don't miss these critical insights that we can obtain from visual data. So I think on that note, I'll just conclude and uh, thank you very much.